Hi, my name is Elizabeth. This is Frizzy Lizzy Stitches, and this is Floss Two Number Three. I'm back. Today is June nineteenth, twenty twenty one, and when I wrote that down to in my outline for my video, I wrote two thousand and one. So I don't know what decade I think I'm in, <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, um, so if you can't tell, I am missing a lot of hair. Um, I got my hair cut on Tuesday, and I got 12 inches cut off. Um, here's my proof. <laughs> um, yeah, my hair is really thick, so she had to do like four little ponytails. Um, but this is the third time that I have grown my hair out and chopped it off. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna donate this hair yet. Um, the first time I did it was in 2014 and I donated it to Locks of Love and then after that I learned weird things about them. Apparently they throw out a bunch of hair or something. I don't know. And they make, I think they make people pay for their wigs instead of donating them or something. But after that I, I donated my hair a second time in 2018 and donated it that time to Pantene Beautiful Lengths. I don't think they take donations anymore. So yeah, I don't know where I'm gonna donate this hair, but it's gonna go to somebody. So if you have any suggestions, they are welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the biggest difference I got my hair cut. It's been really weird because I, I've only washed it once since I got it cut, because like I said, I just got it cut on Tuesday, and today is Saturday. I washed it like Thursday, and the washing it part was really nice because I didn't have to use as much shampoo, and um, it didn't take as long to actually clean my hair. And doing conditioner was weird, because like usually you're supposed to just put the conditioner on your lengths, and obviously there's not a lot of length here, so I was like trying to put conditioner on and not get it on my roots which is almost impossible with tear the short, but I don't know, I'll learn. But the weirdest part was blow drying my hair because it just was, it was difficult using the round brush like I usually do and um, it came out really poofy. And then I like straightened it the next morning and I curled it under a little too much. And this morning I tried to curl it and it just looked terrible because it was like straight and then one weird wave kink and then it like flipped out and I felt like I looked like, I don't, I don't even know what I look like. I looked weird. Um, but yeah, so I had hair struggles this morning. It doesn't look that bad now. I'm okay. <laughs> I came, I recovered. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about it, but I'm also at that weird stage where I'm like, oh my gosh, my hair is gone. Um, so yeah, I just have a whole new head of hair to learn how to style and stuff, so. But that's enough about my hair because this is floss tube where we talk about cross stitch, not haircuts. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about before I get into the stitchy stuff is um, my dad actually watched my videos <laughs> and um, he thought they were really cool. And um, this, I guess tomorrow is Father's Day. So dad, if you're watching this, happy Father's Day. I love you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get into, well, I have some, I have some finishes and I have two whips that I worked on and the finishes are not cross stitch. They're like sewing stuff. Um, and then I have two whips that I worked on and since I don't have as many whips to show you guys, I thought it would be fun to go through some of the patterns that I've bought and some of which are kitted up. So I thought that would be a fun, like, already existing haul thing. I don't know. It's also fun to see what people have in their stash, I think. But, yeah. So, I guess first thing... Oh, and I have a crochet whip as well. So, I have all my stuff, like, lined up on this blanket over here. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I'm going to start with the finishes, which, I like I said, are sewing related. So, the first thing I made was a grime guard for my, my Q-snaps actually in here. <laughs> um, I have, this is an eight, 
8 by 8 Q-snap. So I made this grime guard, and I'm going to take it off so I can show you the fabric. Um, but it's this fabric that I got from Joann's, like, I think a year ago, but it has, like, vintage Disney movie posters on it and stuff. So, some Jungle Book, uh, Alice in Wonderland, what is that one? Cinderella, is that yellow looking one? Uh, Jungle Book, I already said that one. Yeah, so since this is, like, a strip of the fabric, it's probably only got a few movies on it. I think Peter Pan's like right there. But anyway, um, I'm very excited about it because like I knew I wanted to make one because I didn't want to, you know, get my fabric all dirty with my hands. But the other cool thing that I really like about it is how it kind of contains all of your fabric around the Q-snap. And it's a lot easier to just hold because it's all grouped together. Um, and at first I thought I made it a little too wide where it kind of ate up a lot of the inside space to stitch with, but honestly, I kind of really like it, um, because it just hold like, if there's a lot of fabric to hold, it'll hold it because there's enough space in there to jam it in there. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, so I made a cue, I made a, I didn't make a cue snap. I made a grime guard for the cue snap. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then the other thing I made was a book sleeve. This is actually, so this is what it looks like. Um, it has a zipper, which I had never sewn a zipper before, so go me. <laughs> but, um, it's currently housing my, uh, copy of Little Women. So, which I've only read like two chapters, but, um, it's okay. <laughs> the I think it started like last week the stitch along for this but anyway so the book sleeve itself uh, it has red fabric on the inside and this cherry print on the outside and then a red zipper and I did okay with the zipper on this side but on this side it's not like it kind of overlapped weird um, and then the other thing too is the pattern that I used to make this, like I just Googled one that was online and, oh, but multiple s blogs suggested using the fusible foam to give it structure so that it protects your book. But I am a sewing noob and <laughs> so I didn't really know what I was buying or what I was needing because like I went to Joann's and whatever, like the blog that I was using to make this rec that whatever they recommended I couldn't find that exact thing in the store and I didn't really know how to look for it otherwise and I was just like you know what like I kind of almost rage quit like looking for it a fly just flew by um but anyway so I used quilt batting on the inside which is better than just using plain fabric with nothing but it definitely is flimsy because quilt batting is obviously used for quilts which are blankets which are supposed to be soft um but I think I th I bought some more fabric and zippers to make some more of these so I think I'm gonna go back to Joann's and like actually try to buy some fusible foam because it really will add more structure to this and it honestly maybe it'll make it easier to sew I don't know but yeah so I made this book sleeve and it fits just a standard size paperback but the site that I used I'll link it below, um, has different sizes for different books. They have like small, medium, large, and this is the small size. So, but I'll also link the pattern I used for the grind guard, which is from Threadbare, which you haven't, if you haven't used Threadbare, it's really a handy site because they have like cross stitching calculators and like DMC, um, color conversions and all sorts of stuff so um that's a good reference site for cross stitch but they also have a grime guard pattern on there so yeah i made this book sleeve and i made that grime guard so <laughs> that's what my finishes are this week and just a side note it's very overcast where i live today so that's why this video is kind of dark um i don't know really what to do about it because i don't have any like not our non-natural lighting to use so hopefully it's not too bad i think it's mainly just like 
behind me looks really dark and I look fine, but you'll have to let me know if it matters. <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing I worked on in the past two weeks was my Alice in Wonderland piece. So, um, I'm gonna just show it to you and then I'll, because I can't see when I hold this up. <laughs> um, this is what it looks like. And last time I showed it to you, let me fold it so I can see and point at the same time. Okay, so last time I showed it to you, I had started on this little triangle right here. And so, in the past two weeks, I have put in the border for the, this is the tea party block. And then I did some of the bushes and some of the uh, chair backs. And then at the bottom here, I did bushes and some of the teapots and teacups that are sitting on the table. So, yeah. And I still have to go in here between these two black lines to put the white but yeah so I think um I don't know if I'm so it was kind of weird because last video I had actually worked on all my whips which I think I have six now that I have a new start which I'm going to show you in a minute um but this week I only worked on two things, but at the same time I made a lot of progress on these two things. So I don't know if I kind of want to stick with that maybe, but I may like put Alice away and then work on Wizard of Oz these next two weeks since they're very similar um, and like trade them back and forth because I haven't done anything else with my Wizard of Oz yet. So anyway, here is my Alice in Wonderland. It's coming. <laughs> and then, let's see. So my next whip that I worked on was actually a new start. And it's the Cozy Cafe from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And this is what I got. So I, um, this is, I think was the first part that was released. And so I did every, I did, um, I guess pretty much everything that was in the first part except for there's like a little there's a few stitches like right there that matches this right here that I didn't do but I was just gonna do that when I move on to the next one so yeah but I love this it's so cute I haven't done any of the beads yet cuz I don't want to crush them when I do the Q-snap like moving the Q-snap around so I guess I'll just save those for the end but yeah I really like stitching words. Um, I think it's really cute to see them go together. Also, when I was in college, I did a lot of like hand lettering with uh, calligraphy markers and pens and stuff. So it kind of reminds me of that, like stitching the cute, cutesy different fonts and things. Um, but yeah, I freaking love this so much. Um, so the, the order that these were released, um, there's like a, there's a matcha cup over here, and then there's like um, Earl Grey tea, so like a little teacup right here. And instead of like doing the matcha and then going back to do the green or the Earl Grey, I think I'm just gonna do the Earl Grey next, and then just work my way this way. So, but my goal is to get caught up on this, so that I can, um, well, be caught up. <laughs> I, um, the other stitch along I'm doing right now is the Made to Create, um, one by Caterpillar Cross Stitch, and I'm caught up on that, um, which is why I'm not showing it today, because there's no new changes from last time, <laughs> but, um, the last part for that comes out on, excuse me, the last part for that comes out on June the 25th, and the next part for this comes out on June the 25th, so... I would like to be able to basically replace my stitch along slot. <laughs> like when Made to Create is done, this can be my new like current stitch along that I'm keeping up with. So yeah, I would like to catch up with this. Plus it's so freaking adorable. I just don't wanna put it down. 
<laughs> and I'm really excited about the Earl Grey teacup because it's the cutest in my opinion so far. But yeah, so those are my two whips. Um, I should probably like try to be cute so I can have a thumbnail. <laughs> um, like that? I don't know. I kind of like it better this way. I actually should look at the camera this time too because I noticed in all my thumbnails I'm like looking at the screen, not my camera, which is hard to talk to the actual camera because then I can like see myself in my peripheral vision and it's a little odd, so. I don't know. This may be better. I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah. So there's that. And I did not mention, but this is the picture of this. I think it's 28 count picture of this plus linen in opal, which is um, the, what the call for is. And I bought the kit, so. I just love how this looks. It's so cute. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the Alice in Wonderland one was just on um, ice blue 28 count linen. So. Okay, so that is my two whips that I worked on that were cross stitch. I also worked on my Coraline doll. I didn't make that much progress, but I made a big milestone. Okay, so. I, last time I showed this to you, I had one and a half legs, um, and now I have two full legs and they are connected to each other. Um, I am kind of annoyed with the striping that I did on, specifically on this leg, because it obviously looks really janky. It looks much better from the back, but um, yeah, I am definitely a, uh, amateur when it comes to changing colors and it like blending properly but honestly I'm not that mad about it because it's my first one and it's supposed to be kind of quirky anyway but um yeah but I was very confused and th this was the reason why I had, I had taken a break from this for a while I was very confused on how I was supposed to combine these legs together but turns out I was just reading the instructions weird because all you have to do is like once you you tie off one leg and then the other leg you like chain five and then connect it to the other leg and then you basically like single crochet around the entire thing so that 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 chain five or whatever kind of makes the little crotch <laughs> so anyway but the next step for this is it's a bunch of single crochet rounds, probably like this tall. And then it'll go into some more color changing because she has like a striped shirt. And yeah, so hope maybe my next thing will just be finish the black. Maybe start on the shirt. So but yeah, here's my Coraline doll. She's got legs and they're connected. <laughs> um, but yeah. So yeah, um, now that I'm done showing you my whips and things, I am going to show you kind of like the patterns and stuff that I have in my stash. So I'll start with the stuff that I have kitted up, um, which is in this bag. <laughs> um, let's see. So I guess I'm just going to go in here and pull stuff out. I don't really have a particular order that I'm trying to show anything in. So the first thing is, surprise, surprise, it's Satsuma Street. <laughs> um, these are some Christmas ornament kits that I bought. Oh, the glare. I bought these, there we go. I bought these in December last year, but they basically came, I had gone out of town and then they got delivered while I was out of town. So I didn't actually get them until after Christmas, but yeah, so. I'm excited for these. I probably will do one in July since these are the only Christmas things I have. But this is also the first thing, the first time that I'll be stitching on perforated paper. Um, I've never done that before. But, um, and then the kit comes with like, obviously the paper and the floss and the, like the beads and sequins and like a needle. 
and I think like the little string that you use to make it into an ornament. But um, this collection has two others in it, that little deer with the Santa hat and then like that little bird right there. But I liked the Santa Claus and the snowman because they just looked, they were just more Christmassy. Um, but yeah, I, this Santa is so cute, I love him. He's adorable. So yeah, I got these and these have been in my stash, like I said, since like December. <laughs> Um, the next thing that I have that I'm very excited about, I just, I'm also scared to start it, and I don't know when I want to start it, but it's the Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio, and, um, I, if you haven't seen this, I would be surprised, <laughs> but anyway, it is beautiful. I love this so much. I love the fabric. The fabric really is like... There's a child screaming outside. <laughs> um, the fabric is beautiful, and so I wanted to do it exactly as the model was stitched. And so I got all the got all the floss, and I got the it's a uh, picture of this plus murky, and it's forty count, which I've I will I've never stitched on forty count. So this project will be very new to me. It's like. Uh, new to me like I guess as a stitcher because there's lots of different there's lots of things in here that I have not done before for example I've never done a Quaker never stitched on 40 count and I've never stitched with um, over dyed floss so because there's cla it calls for classic color works um, but I'm gonna take the fabric out because I just want to show you because I this thing this thing I kitted it up like at the beginning of the year I think and I haven't obviously done anything with it, so it's just been sitting in this bag, but. Um, so this is the floss. There's, um, let's see. This is black coffee, which is kind of like, I don't know, I'd say it's like a, like a blue gray, black variegated situation. That doesn't really help, but. Um, and then there's another black in here called Blackbird, and this is definitely more of like a brown black variegated situation. This does not help. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then these colors are so bright. This is Lobster Claw, which is kind of like a red orange orange. And then there's bamboo, which honestly just looks white to me. I don't know if it's supposed to have some other colors in it. But, and then we've got frog legs, which is also really pretty and variegated. Let's see, this one's really pretty. Rainy day, it's like the purple. There's a bubble outside. <laughs> Someone's blowing bubbles. Um, sassy brass, uh, honeycomb, and smoke, which is kind of periwinkle-y. It almost kind of matches my shirt, but, um, yeah. And then the fabric, which is so freaking pretty, like, look at this. I can't, this is beautiful. I'm very excited. I like how, like, dirty and antique it looks, so... Yeah, I don't know when I'm going to start this, but um, definitely want to be working on it this October. For sure. But, yeah. And I just love these colors. They're going to stand out so nicely on the fabric. Okay. This is, like, my, like, dream project right at the moment because I haven't started it and I'm really excited about it. But, like I said, I'm kind of scared to start it because it's also a very big project. I don't actually know... I mean, it's a big piece of fabric. This is like a 17 by 25 piece of fabric. It says it's 261 by 180 stitches. So, decently large. <laughs> um, every time I read a stitch count, I like imagine the little 10 by 10 blocks. And I'm like, oh, that's like this many blocks or whatever. Like, oh, that's 18 blocks. I like, what did I say, 260, 26 blocks. So yeah, 
This is Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. And then the last um, pattern that I actually have kitted up is, I'm not gonna take all the stuff out because um, I don't wanna go through everything, but um, it's called, what is it called? Dorothy's Discovery by Silver Creek Samplers. And I thought this was really cute. And I already got all the fabric and the floss that's needed for this. So, and I actually also found this random, like, these are some random fabrics I have. I found this random, like, fabric from Michaels that looks like Dorothy's skirt. So I figured that would be cute for finishing this, um, but we're obviously not there yet. <laughs> so, so the next, th I have a bag of unstitched patterns. <laughs> uh, these are not kitted up, but I'm really excited about them. I bought all of these, or I bought most of these from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher, because I think some of these, I know at least two of them, maybe three, came out during the, what do they call it? Expo? So, uh, this is the first one. This is Teresa Kogut. Is that how you say her name? Um, Whimsy Halloween. And just like this little witch with a little cat and happy pumpkin. I thought it was so cute. Um, and then, uh, Elizabeth Ann can stitch, stitch this for her boyfriend, and I thought it was so cute. It's Silver Creek Sampler, uh, Reaping Love. I just thought this was hilarious and adorable. <laughs> and this one is my one and only, uh, Hello from Liz Matthews Pattern. This is the Butterfly Cloak, Cloach, Cloak. I'm really excited about these, but... I just don't know when I'm gonna stitch them. And then this one is from Tiny Modernist. This is uh, your own kind of beautiful. And what really made me happy about this was these chickens are so cute. I don't know how they're related to being beautiful, but they're adorable. And I also really like this butterfly up here. So they're super cute. <laughs> and then the last pattern I have is um, Cricut Collection. Cottage welcome. So, yeah, I really like these. I just don't, like I said, don't know when I'm gonna do them. But yeah, that's all my patterns that I have just kind of sitting around. Um, well, there's a couple that I have PDFs of that, let's see, I have a, The Sweetest Pie from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I'll put a picture up. And another one I have is this I don't know what it's called, but it's like a bumblebee mandala looking pattern. I bought it off of Etsy. Also super cute. I'll put a picture. And yeah, I think it's all my patterns that I have laying around. So <laughs> last but not least, uh, plans. So I, I try to like write down plans, but I don't always have full intentions of like 100% sticking to them. It's more of just like a guideline <laughs> that I try to give myself, but um, I like I mentioned earlier, I do want to catch up on Cozy Cafe because I want to be able to keep up with that um, once I'm done with the Made to Create Stitch Along. And I also want to finish the Made to Create Stitch Along, and the last part comes out on the 25th. So, and then the other thing that I wrote down for my plans is. A color conversion for the Wizard of Oz stitch along. Um, I so the th third chapter three came out, which was the it has Scarecrow, Tin Man, Lion, and Dorothy like in the poppy fields. It's so stinking cute. I'll add a picture. And but the first the, so chapter two block was the Glinda the Good Witch with the Munchkins. And the only thing that I don't really like about it is that. And granted, I never read the book, so maybe it's maybe she's described like this in the book. But I was imagining that she would have, you know, her pink dress and her blonde curly hair like she does in the movie. But in the pattern, she's got like purple skin and 
a white dress and she has like scraggly looking hair to look more like a witch I guess but anyway I I think I want to make her dress pink and then just make her skin like normal human colored skin <laughs> um but yeah so I just don't know I've never done a excuse me never done a color conversion like that and I also want to make sure that I pick pinks that are going to match the rest of the chart so I may just hold off on that block and stitch the um the block that just came out the one with the scarecrow and the tin man on it and then just kind of go from there but I do I think I do want to change her dress to pink instead of being white um but yeah we'll see how that goes I'm not sure yet <laughs> I really don't know <laughs> um but like I said I haven't done anything else on that pat on that chart so since last time so I still just have a bunch of border that I've done but I may do the Maybe that's what I'll do this next week. I'll work on the Scarecrow Poppy Field block and then work on Cozy Cafe. Yeah. And maybe a third project will slip in there. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think so. And I think I've probably talked enough. So now I get to edit, yay. <laughs> it's get, it's honestly getting a little better. Last week was a little rough because I was all over the place, but I think I did a lot better this time, staying organized and not having to start and stop my camera 20 times. So, um, that's it for me. And I guess I'll talk to you guys next time in two weeks. So, bye.